hello designers. When I was working years ago for one of the big fashion brands, I noticed that their event invitations were really simple. They were elegant and classic, but they were very, very simple. And then I started to notice all the other big fashion names did the same thing. So we are going to make one of these invitations in Microsoft Word. Yes, you heard it right. You do not need expensive design software to make something really, really elegant and beautiful. So meet me in Word and let's get started. All right, so we're gonna do a new document. Just your letter, eight and a half by 11. The first thing we need to do is go up and find, let's see, page setup and click on landscape. You're gonna switch your orientation and go back up to format and document. And let's change the margins. I think we're gonna do, let's see, 0.25 at the top and then we'll do 0.5 at the bottom and the left we wanna do zero and the right we'll do zero, gutter, hit okay. Now it's gonna go, oh my God, don't do this. And just ignore it, it's gonna be fine. And the next important thing we're gonna do is we're going to make sure your cursor's there. The next thing we're gonna do is insert a table. Tables are so great for designing. They just kind of keep everything where they go. They give you automatic cut lines, which we'll make. So we're gonna do two columns and one row. And there you go. This is the beginning, but we need to make this the right size. So I always go up and select my table. Table, select table. That's just how I, you just ensure that you're in the right space, the right things are highlighted. And so now we want to go up and we're going to go to table properties. We're going to go just, this is fine, left, none, good, row. And so here is where we're going to do our specific, specify height. I said specific, it, specific heights. Um, Specify your height at seven inches because it's going to be five by seven invitation. And for your column, we want to do an eggs or preferred with the five. I don't know why they say preferred because I want it to be five. So it will be five. Hit OK. Ta-da! This is going to be the front and back of our invitation. So exciting. Okay, now we're going to select our table again, and this is where we're going to make those cut lines I was telling you about. So a quarter point, sometimes a half a point, it, it just sort of depends on the design, but that should do you. And we want to make sure we have all our boxes or all our borders checked. I'm double checking this, all the borders. Yes, no, maybe so. Mm -hmm. And then I like this sort of, like the third or fourth gray is good for cutting. And that means when you cut, whether you're using a knife or scissors or a paper cutter, you know, if a little bit of gray gets on your side of the knife, it's not gonna be so um, obvious. And that line in the middle is gonna be our fold line. And we don't want that to be so obvious either. So I think that's a good color. Okay, now we have our table. Okay, so we're going up to insert and we're gonna insert a picture from a file. And I saved out my inspiration piece I found on Pinterest. It's blurry because I don't wanna get in trouble. I don't own the copyright to this piece, but you can use anything you find online for your own purposes or just to do your own layout. You're gonna make it your own. And now you wanna go up to wrap text and in front of text. We're gonna use this so much. If you ever get into trouble designing in Word, it's usually because that wrap text is askew. So I always try to keep stuff in front if that's where it needs to be. So I'm gonna leave this on the right side and we're gonna design our text on the, I'm just gonna level this, get this 
kind of as equal as possible. I've shrunk, you can see I've shrunk it down to five by seven by just grabbing that handle and sizing it. And now I'm gonna click in my first column and I've already, I've already done my text. I just based it on what they had for a mock event that I'm having. And so I'm going to select this. Hello. Select this text. And under format, I'm going to change the case because in my inspiration piece, it's all uppercase. So I'm going to change all my letters to uppercase. That kind of helps with the clean, streamlined look. And then I know from this that I don't have this exact font, but I know copper plate is pretty close. And I think regular is pretty close to the, yes, I'm from the South, regular. Regular is pretty close to what they have in terms of font weight. And I'm gonna center it. And then I think, yeah, 10 points. Nine and a half. Let's try nine and a half. That looks pretty, pretty darn close. Here's the thing about tables. Make sure it's hard, so hard. So you have to click inside the table if you want to move the text in the table. This is a little glitch that I haven't quite worked out yet. See, it keeps moving my table. I don't want that. I want to just hit the return key and make paragraph marks all the way down. So I am gonna sacrifice that C for right now. And I'll just add a C and delete that one just because I wanna make sure that table doesn't move. That's gonna throw everything off. And you can see, I'll show the invisibles. That's about how many paragraph returns I used. Okay, you got it. Okay, hold on, let's fix this. So center everything again. Mm. Here we go, sorry, See, here we go. And now I gotta add that C back and get rid of this one. So that's just a little cheat because sometimes it gets wonky with trying to get your cursor exactly inside the table, but here's how far down we're going. Okay, so that looks pretty lined up, but you can see that our space between the lines, which is known as letting, sorry, had a brain freeze. The letting is a space between your lines of text. So I'm gonna go up under format and I'm gonna go to paragraph and I'm gonna go down to spacing. And it's as simple, but I don't want that. I want it at least, I think, what did I say it was? I think 13, that's pretty close. 13 is pretty close, but if you really wanted to Sometimes it, you know, it'll noodle at you. I'm like, what if I just add a half a point, 13 and a half? Yeah, that's, I think that's as close as we're gonna get. That is pretty stinking close. So I like that. It looks good. Look at it. It's already looking amazing. And then I had a color, a navy I already picked out. We'll do some more videos on like color choosing and selection and stuff. But I had a navy that I really liked to match my background. So I'm gonna type that. Hex, I almost want to say hexa, but it's hex. Um, color in and hit okay. And then look at that beautiful blue. Oh my gosh. And so now I need an icon. I'm doing a Paisley theme for this invitation. So you can find your clip art so many places. There's lots of free clip art online. There are, you might want to use your own logo or your client's logo. Today, this is this cool thing in Microsoft Word. You go to insert and under stock images, you can get images or icons. So I want a simple icon. So I'm going to see if they have a Paisley. So P A, okay. Um, what was the other stuff? like paintbrushes and stuff. Yeah, see, they have so many cute little simple, remember we're going for simple and elegant and here is a great paisley. I can't believe it. I want the the white with the sort of background. Oh my God, it shifted everywhere. So this is what happens. 
you got to go up to wrap text. It, it took me immediately to grab graphic formats, then go to wrap text and then do in front of text and everything will just go back to where it's supposed to be. Problem solved. But now, and look at that, that is almost the exact same size as our inspiration piece. That is just crazy. And I want to turn this a little, you can grab that little rotate button on top and just click on it and turn it around. And then this is all one color and I'm going to make mine all one color and I can go back to the shape fill and just hit, click on that navy that I just used for my text. Oh, magic. Look at that. It's so pretty. You guys, that is so pretty. That is the front of our invitation. And so we are done with our inspiration piece. We don't need that anymore. And now let's work on the back. So you can see we're going to, after we cut, we're going to leave that for the fold. And then we're going to put this, put our art on the back. And this helps with, if you print out on cardstock and you do a, okay, let me insert my picture real quick. Insert picture from file. This is a background I got on VectEasy.com, a great site for free art. And I will link to that below. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that. VectEasy has a subscription plan that's really affordable. They also have so many free options for personal use. It is incredible. I believe some of them are for commercial use too, but we always have to figure that out. But this is just, oh my gosh, I love it. And it goes with our little front theme. Now you'll see it's not exactly five by seven. That's okay. The only trouble with this, I want to really make sure I get this placed on my line. Now it can go over the top and it can go over the sides, but I want it left with that fold line. I don't want it to go over so then when it folds, I don't see it. I am not sure what that text on the bottom is. That's just like a word thing, but it, it doesn't print. It'll click off in a minute. So this is, we're going to ensure that we have what's called bleed. And that is artwork that extends past the cut line. So we're going to send this, we're going to go back to wrap text and we're going to send this to the back actually, because those little lines we made on our table, our table border that we made before. Now we have these faint lines where we know exactly where to cut. If you're not using like, a cutting machine or something. Now, to be fair, this design is really ink heavy. This is something where if you were doing a lot of invitations from your own printer, you might be changing the cyan cartridge out a little bit. I'm going to tick this over a little bit just to make sure it's perfect. And then, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you might want to use a more basic pattern, like maybe do your paisley as dots. We'll have another video on that, how to create a pattern. And so the, that is pretty much it. Look at that. Oh my God, it is gorgeous. I mean, really, it's not just, it's just a great way to do a really simple, elegant thing. Now I'll show you fast here. I printed this out. I'm using my X-Acto knife and my ruler. Um, and I'm just going to cut this out. I put a little faint drag at the beginning just to make that fold a little bigger. And now I'm going to use one of my favorite products, which I'll also link to below. This is the Scotch double adhesive tape and just three little points. Flip that over and that just gives you a little bit more weight. It's amazing. So here's what it looks like. I know I geek out about this stuff, but if you got this far through the video, you are also geeking out about it and you might be a designer if you're not already. I hope you enjoyed that. I have so much fun doing this, you guys. I would love, please, if you make an invitation using this technique, I would love to see it. You can tag me on Instagram. You can email me. Links to, links to all the things you need links to are below. And I can't thank you enough for being here. Let me know what you want to learn, please. I love making these videos. I would love to help you on your graphic design journey. Okay, that's it. I'm Christy Kelly and this is Christy Kelly Designs. Thanks again.